Chapter 2 So, how did it go? Adam came up beside Paget as they exited Mrs. Brown's social media class. Did you like our Max? Paget tried to stop from smiling and gave him a firm lick. Setting me up wasn't part of the plan. You liked him, Adam crowed. I knew it. He's sweet, she admitted. I'm not sure if I'll be seeing him again, but I did like him. If you liked him, then what's the problem? I'm really busy with school and work right now. I'm not sure if I have time for a romance. Everybody has time for romance. It's a necessity of life. Adam shifted his knapsack. Besides, when I spoke to Max this morning, he had nothing but good things to say about you. Involuntarily, she asked, did he? He really likes you, too. He said you were beautiful, funny, smart, and kind. He's very into you. Paget smiled. It was nice to be complimented like that. Adam, why are you doing this? You're a friend. He's a friend. I like my friends to be happy, Adam shrugged. It's pretty simple. You don't think I'm happy? You didn't have this goofy happy smile until today, Adam said as he gave her a wave. He went down a different corridor, calling over his shoulder. Call him! Paget tried to restrain her goofy smile. Beautiful, funny, smart, and kind. She held the words close to her heart and decided that maybe she would give Max a call. When her classes were over for the day, she managed an hour of study in the library before catching the bus to the cafe for her shift. Dix was knee-deep in customers when she arrived. Paget quickly put on her apron and got to work helping her co-worker. It was a solid two hours before they finally had a lull and could talk. How was Barney's? Dix created a blueberry smoothie for herself and sucked on the straw. It was fun. They were a nice group of people. You're blushing. Who did you meet? Dix demanded. Okay, he's hot. He's sweet and he's funny. His name is Max. Ooh, Max. Dix swirled the straw. Are you going to call him? I'm thinking about it. Don't think. Do. And do it while we're here so I can listen in. She smiled. Does he have a sexy voice? Very. Then I want to hear it. Paget pulled out Max's business card and Dix immediately yanked it out of her hand to have a look. Did they run out of ink? Pardon? Paget asked. His last name. It just has an R. Dix sucked on a straw. Weird. Paget looked at the card and saw that Dix was right. She hadn't really paid attention to it last night. Maybe there's a reason. That his last name is only R? You'll be Mrs. R if you married the guy. Or maybe it's unpronounceable. Like Rezivlk or something. Paget laughed. I'm sure it's something normal. Don't forget to ask. I need to know. I won't sleep until I find out. Then I'd better call and find out. I'd hate to see you as an insomniac. Paget took out her cell phone and dialed Max's number. She waited as the call connected, ringing in her ear. Looking at the business card, all of her carefully rehearsed opening lines left her head when a voice said, This is Max. Why isn't your last name on your card? She blurted out. Dix burst out laughing before going to help a customer. There was a moment of silence. Then Max asked, Paget? Hi. Paget felt a little embarrassed now. Sorry, I was just looking at the card you gave me. He laughed. I guess it's not on there. I left it off. People remember it, which makes it kind of a self-advertising move. Also, as much as I love my family, I'd rather not get judged by their reputation. I guess that makes sense. As much as Paget loved her own family, she appreciated being judged for herself and not their social standing. Maybe Max's family wasn't quite a reputable bunch. Does this mean I get a chance to take you out on a date? He sounded very pleased by the prospect. Well, you did say something about showing me the stars, she reminded him, smiling. Then I'd better not disappoint. Dix leaned over and stage whispered loudly. He sounds sexy. Tell him you're closing tonight and he can walk you home. Then I get to see what the hunky voice looks like. Dix, Paget hissed. Max chuckled. What time do you close? Eleven thirty. We'll be done our cleanup at midnight, Dix practically sang toward the phone. You don't have to come. It's okay, 
Paget rolled her eyes and gave Dix a little push away. The young woman laughed and just came back. I'll be there. Like I said the other night, I'd rather walk you home and make sure you get there safe. He's sweet, Dix mouthed to Paget. Thank you, Paget replied to Max, turning her back on Dix. She gave him the address of the cafe. You still didn't find out what his last name was, Dix said after Paget ended the call. Now we'll never know. It's probably something normal, like Richards or Riker. Dix laughed. Or he could be Mr. Wright. Wouldn't that be funny? Max, as Mr. Wright? He certainly had a good start. It would be. Paget and Dix completed the closing routine and Max arrived. Paget introduced him to Dix and he shook her hand. Dix smiled. He matches his voice. Excuse me? Max asked. Sexy. Would you date me? She dimpled prettily. Dix! Paget stared at her friend in shock. She couldn't believe what she'd just asked. Um, no. Max was perplexed. I prefer women my own age. It makes it easier when you have more in common. Dix turned into an interrogator. Do you date more than one woman at a time? No. What's your opinion of men who cheat or abuse? That they should never be in a relationship. Have you ever hit a woman? No. Have you done or do you use any drugs? Weed? In college? Not anymore. Alcoholic? No. Employed? Yes. Any weird fetishes or fantasies? No. Dick, stop it. Paget put a hand on Max's arm. I'm sorry about this. I had no idea. No, it's okay, Max smiled. She's doing what any good friend would do. Dick smiled. I like him. You can keep him. Thanks, Paget said dryly. Now let's go before she starts asking more embarrassing questions. It was nice to meet you, Dix, Max smiled. Paget flushed and grabbed Max by the arm, pulling him out of the cafe and along the streets. So, Paget cleared her throat, how was your day? I got a bunch of the paperwork out of the way for a bid we're putting in on a project, which was tedious, but necessary. Mostly it was just business as usual. However, now my day is complete since I get to see you. How was your day? Max threaded his fingers through hers. Paget had to admit she liked it. It was good. Nothing big happened, but I did decide to call this guy who seems really sweet. Oh, really? Max asked. He even offered to walk me home. Wow, that was really nice of him. Paget smiled. I know. They were approached by a man who had obviously seen better days. Hey, Max, my man, you got some money to spare for me? <laughs> no, but if you're at the bridge in the morning, I'm bringing by coffee and breakfast to the crew there, Max replied. He stepped just slightly in front of Paget, shielding her from the man. What about you, lovely lady? You got a dollar for poor me? My disability ain't coming yet this month, and I need to live. Sorry, I don't have my purse with me. Paget was glad that she didn't. There was something off about the man. Max sidled past the stranger, keeping her away from him. Come to the bridge in the morning, Dusty. I'll do that. Dusty raised a hand in farewell and continued up the sidewalk, asking anyone he met for money. Max put his arm around Paget, and she leaned into him as they walked away. If you see Dusty, cross the street. When he's sober, he's unpredictable, and when he's high, he can be violent for no reason. Paget nodded. Suddenly, she was glad she wasn't alone walking home at night. Normally, Paget felt quite safe but tonight she feared that it might have gone very differently if Max hadn't been with her. Do you know a lot of those types of people like Dusty? Some. Most people are just down on their luck like Ed. Some of them will give you the shirt off their back if you let them, and it's their only shirt. They're just that giving and helpful. There are good people and bad people in every walk of life. Max and Paget walked through the park. We all just want to get through life and find a little happiness while we do it. Are you happy? Paget asked as she took out her key. I'm very happy when I'm with you. Max waited as she unlocked the door. Anytime you need someone to walk you home, please call me. It's my new favorite hobby. I will. I promise. She reached out and gave his hand a squeeze. Good night, Max. Good night, Paget. Max held her hand for a moment, then let go. Paget watched him disappear into the park, then headed inside. 
The next morning, in social media and broadcasting class, Mrs. Brown smiled benignly at her students. There was a three minutes until the end of class, and Paget knew the teacher had something up her sleeve. "'I have an announcement to make.' Everyone quieted down and paid attention as Mrs. Brown continued. "'I'm springing a surprise test on you.' There were groans, and Paget wondered how this was supposed to be a surprise when Mrs. Brown just announced that she was going to give them this test. "'It's important that you study everything that has been taught this term, plus any other materials related to this class. This test is going to encompass everything that you already know, should know, and are going to know. Some of the questions you will not be able to answer, but you must do the best you can. You'll only have the time in class to try to complete the test. I doubt anyone will complete it. That's okay. This is to gauge what you have already learned and how you would react in situations that we have not already discussed. This test is this Wednesday. You have two days to study. Mrs. B., how's this a surprise if you're telling us about it? A student asked. Mrs. Brown's smile widened. Thank you. The surprise is, whoever has top score, the best score, will start in the broadcasting booth early. It's extra practice, it's extra commitment, it's extra credit, and it's going to look great on your resume. Only one of you will get this opportunity. The buzzer sounded and the room exploded in talk. This was a huge opportunity. Paget hadn't expected to get time in the broadcast booth until next term. It would mean an additional three months of experience, which would put anyone who got ahead in the pool of potential employees when they graduated. Paget gathered up her books and went to the front of the class to speak to Mrs. Brown. "'Mrs. Brown, could I have a moment of your time?' Paget asked. She sat on the edge of her desk. "'What can I help you with, Paget? "'Is there anything in particular that we should study for on this test?' everything. Excuse me? Paget sought clarification. Everything was a lot of material. Everything that we've covered? Everything in broadcast history? Everything in broadcast history? Everything in how broadcasting works? Everything in broadcasting's projected future? Everything! Mrs. Brown said as she pushed her glasses up her nose. The most important question is going to be the first. Make sure you take the time to answer it properly. Good luck. Thank you. Paget wasn't sure what Mrs. Brown's advice had helped very much, but she fully intended to do her best. As she exited the classroom, Adam came up beside her. Did you call him? Adam, Paget exclaimed. You're as bad as dicks, pushing into my love life. Ha! You have a love life, Adam did a fist pump. That means you've called him. I did, Paget admitted. He even walked me home from the cafe last night. Awesome! Some day you'll be telling your grandkids that I was the one who introduced you to. Slow down. We're just seeing each other a little. It doesn't mean we're getting married. Adam just grinned at her. I want a child named after me. It doesn't have to be the first name, it can be the middle. Preferably a boy, but hey, if you want to saddle a girl with Adam, that's up to you. Paget rolled her eyes. He just walked me home. That's all. Plus, he's going to show me the stars sometime. I'm thinking I should get an invite to the wedding. Maybe as a groomsman. I don't know how many brothers you two have, but you can tag me on the end. Had him stop, Paget laughed. Keep me posted on how it goes. You're coming to Barney's on Friday, right? He winked at her. Max will be there. I have to work. Come afterwards. For an hour... You know the cafe closes at midnight and the bar at one. It seemed silly to Paget to come for less than an hour. Sure, or at least have Max walk you home again, Adam wiggled his eyebrows. Do you match make often, or are we your first attempt, and that's why you're so excited, Paget asked. You guys are my firsts. Oh, boy. Now go away. I have a lot of studying to do for Mrs. Brown's class. I know. I hope I don't win. I do not want to be in the booth to talk. I just want to produce or work on the technical side. Adam knocked on his books. I have no intention of even cracking one of these open. You might want to anyways. It probably counts as part of our grade, Paget advised him. That's okay. Mediocre is my middle name. Adam. She stopped walking to make him look at her and be serious. Your grades are important. 
They could be what determines if you get hired by a company. I have a job lined up with an online group. I work with them already, and I'm just finishing my degree. Once I do that, I'm full-time. Adam put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm already set. Oh, Paget wasn't really surprised. Adam always seemed to know the answers already. It made sense that he would have experience in the field. What happens if they can't take you on full-time? What if you have to look for another job? They keep trying to tell me not to finish school because they want me to get to work already. I just need seven more months to finish. I'm okay, Paget. You don't need to worry. Adam winked. What we do need to do is find a place for you. I know you're a year and a half away from graduation, but that doesn't mean you can't start working somewhere part-time. Besides the cafe? I'd love to, but I'm not sure that I have time. We'll make time. Even if I can convince the guys I work with to let you sub in once in a while, it will help your career to have the experience. Thanks, Adam. I'd really appreciate that. No problem. Now, get studying. Paget did study hard. She studied every chance she got at the cafe, and since it was busy during her four-hour shift, that basically meant reading all of a page in the textbook. She walked home, mentally going through all the facts that she knew, and trying to determine what she should brush up on. Paget let herself into the apartment and began making lists, turning her living room upside down, looking for cue cards. In the middle of the chaos, her cell phone rang. Paget saw, from the caller ID, that it was Max. Hello? His sexy voice sent a thrill through her. I was wondering if we could see the stars tonight. Paget closed her eyes in regret. I just don't have the time right now. I've got a major test coming up in two days that was just announced. I have to get top grade. There's a chance to be put in the broadcasting booth early. She sighed. I'm sorry. It will have to be another night. Don't be. What if I come and help you study? Max asked. I'll bring supper and ask you questions. And when you're ready to just read, I've got some paperwork that needs to be done that I can focus on. Are you sure? Paget asked. She didn't want to intrude into his life. Absolutely, he assured her. We can just spend some time together. I'm happy with that. Thank you. I'd like that. Paget appreciated that he was so easy about this. Gary would have pitched a fit and sulked if she didn't do what he wanted when he wanted. Paget told Max her apartment number, and he promised he'd be there with Chinese. Paget spread her notes, textbooks, and her laptop over the kitchen table, and was deep in broadcasting history when she had to buzz Max into the building. She unlocked her door and went back to studying, cue cards of information mounting up. Max let himself in, carrying two bags and a folder. He popped the bags on the kitchen counter and looked at the kitchen table. "'Give me a minute and I'll move everything,' Paget said as she scribbled down another note. Don't. You're all set up right there, and it works for you. If you don't mind, I'll raid the cupboards for cutlery plates and stuff. I'll set everything buffet-style on the counter. Then you can grab what you want and keep on studying. I know you would probably rather be doing other things, but I need to study. It's important that I get this chance to broadcast early. Max found the cutlery and set them with a couple of glasses on the counter. Actually, this is good. First, I like that I get to help you with something that's important to you. And second, I've been putting off the paperwork for the city for a little while. It's due next week, so I really do need to get it done. Great, Paget smiled and heaped some rice onto her plate. Did you get soy sauce? Of course. He presented it to her with a flourish, making Paget smile. They finished choosing their suppers from the selection and returned to the table. Paget managed to give up a third of it so that Max could work on his forms. Max pointed to her cue cards. A little old school, aren't they? Maybe, but they work. Last test I achieved a 98% because of them. Paget continued writing down small facts that she thought might be important. Wow, good for you. They worked side by side quietly. It was nice having his company in a quiet, unobtrusive way. Max took away her dirty dishes, got her more water, then washed the dishes. You don't need to do that, Paget protested. They can wait. You need to study. Max put the leftover Chinese in the fridge. You don't have time for dishes. Besides, I worked in a diner for two winters. I know all about doing dishes. You worked in a diner? Paget asked, amused. Somehow, that was hard to reconcile with the sexy man before her. I needed something for the winters when the demolition work was slow, Max explained. Now it's been picking up, so I've had full-time work out of it. You work for a demolition company? 
she asked, curious about his life. I started out as a laborer, and now I'm getting more into the supervision and avoiding paperwork where possible, Max replied. What about your city forms? Paget pointed to them, avoiding them. I'm taking a small break. I'll get back to them. Max swished her scrub brush through the water. Now, go back to studying. Paget smiled and continued until she ran out of cue cards. She would have to get some more tomorrow from the discount store. She started reading through the ones that she had, trying to memorize them. After an hour of doing that, Max sat aside his forms and helped her by asking questions and seeing if she got the right answers. Better than that, he asked her more questions as he curiously read the cards. This is really amazing. I had no idea you needed to know all this stuff before becoming an on-air broadcaster, Max said as he read another card. Three years of college, Paget replied. Most of it I'll probably never use, but it's important to know. Thank you for doing this with me. Actually, Paget, thank you for letting me. Max looked at her, suddenly serious. I like hanging out with you. I like that I can help you with something that's important to you, and I'm learning about what you are passionate about. Plus, you got those pesty city forms done, Paget yawned. Sorry, but I guess it's time to quit. Shall we do it again tomorrow? Max asked. He stacked the cue cards together. Are you sure? She didn't want to inconvenience him. Absolutely. I love being your study buddy. Paget laughed. Okay, then. Night, Paget. Max pushed in his chair. I'll see you tomorrow. She followed him to the door. Good night. Max turned, and for a second Paget thought that he might kiss her. Instead, he softly laid a hand against her cheek for a moment, then smiled and walked away. Fighting the butterflies in her stomach, Paget locked the door and leaned against it. She could really get to like him, she reflected. True to his word, Max showed up the next day with pizza. Maybe he had noticed her fridge was a little bare and was trying to fill it up. Or he didn't want Chinese two nights in a row. Either way, Paget now had enough leftovers to get her through the end of the week if she was careful. Paget had made more cue cards and they sat on the couch as they went through them, trying to get her prepared for tomorrow's test. After hours of cramming, Paget felt like her head was going to explode trying to keep all of the information in. Finally, Max set down the cue cards. Okay, one more thing. Why is this your passion? What? Paget looked at him blankly. Your teacher said that the very first question would be the most important, Max explained. If I were trying to fill a spot, I'd do an interview question like, Why are you the person I should pick to fill this position? And you would answer, Why this is your passion? Paget thought about it. I've always wanted to be in broadcast. I hear people on the radio, especially talk radio, discussing the news and important things that are happening in people's lives. Everyone has a different opinion, and radio is freedom to express ourselves and to communicate what our community feels, what it embraces, what it rejects, where it wants to direct itself. Radio connects us. Every day I turn on a radio and listen. I want to actively participate in the community through radio, to help direct the conversation, to be there in the moment, to belong to that community. I love it. Max smiled. Now you're prepared. If that's even on the test, Paget rubbed her tired eyes. We should go over everything one more time. No. Max laid the cards down. What you should do is go to bed and get some sleep. Tomorrow, go over this stack right here. These are the ones that you've been having some difficulty with. You don't need to go over the rest because you know that information. Then, after a good breakfast, go take the test. He stood and pulled her to her feet, giving her a hug. You're going to do great. Paget leaned her head on his chest. He was so warm and comfortable. She really must be tired, she decided. I just want this so badly. The worst that can happen is that you don't get it, Max said supportively. Then you'll work hard and wait your turn just like you were going to before this opportunity came up. However, you did everything you could to get to this spot, and you should be proud of it. You're going to be right up there at the top of your class. I'm proud of you. I couldn't get there without my study, buddy, Paget mumbled into his shirt. She had her eyes closed and could feel herself drifting a little. I think it's time I left and you got to bed, Max chuckled. He reluctantly let her go. Paget followed him to the door. This time, Max cupped her face with both his hands. He lowered his head and kissed her, just a whisper against her lips. Good night, Paget. Good night. Paget locked the door after him and floated her away to bed, smiling the entire time. 
Paget awoke from steamy dreams of Max to find out that she had been hitting the snooze button. A lot. She was going to be late. Suddenly, wide awake, Paget bolted from the bed and pulled on the first clothes she saw. Darting to the kitchen, she grabbed her keys and bounced from foot to foot as she put on her sneakers, quickly lacing them. Forgetting her books, her purse, her phone, everything, Paget locked the door and ran as fast as she could onto the street. Thankfully, she had ten dollars in her pocket, so she hailed a cab to get to the college as quickly as possible. The fare was only six dollars, but she didn't wait for the cabbie to make change, bolting to class. Out of breath, yesterday's makeup smeared, Hair uncombed, she slid into her seat in Mrs. Brown's class. Class, this is an open book test. You may keep your notes and textbooks and use them at any time. There will be no talking during the test. Mrs. Brown gave Paget a disapproving look over her lateness, but continued talking. Please take a copy and pass the rest back. Do not flip over your tests until I say so. To look at any of the questions before I give the OK is to automatically get a zero grade. She handed out stacks of paper, and everyone handed them back in the rows. Paget took a copy and passed the rest to the next student. There must be thirty pages or more. She swallowed thickly. She wasn't prepared. She had left her textbooks at home. She had no notes. She hadn't finished studying her difficult cue cards. She had no pen. She had no pen! Frantically, Paget felt the pockets of her jeans. All she had were her keys and pocket lint. That was it. Paget tried not to panic. Surely someone could lend her one before the test started. Paget raised her hand. Turn over your test and begin. Remember, absolutely no talking. Everyone turned over their pages. Paget slowly lowered her hand. Mrs. Brown had sat down at her desk and was marking papers from another class. She was ignoring the students in general. Paget turned over the test. Right there at the first question was just as Max predicted. Why should you be chosen to receive the open broadcasting spot? The most important question, the most important test of her life at this moment, she couldn't answer it because she didn't have a pen. Paget put her head in her hands. She didn't deserve the possession, Paget reflected. She was obviously unprepared. Paget sighed and watched as others furiously scribbled down answers. Adam caught her eye and gestured as if to say, What are you doing? Paget mimed a pen and then put her hands in the air, shrugging. He gave her an incredulous look, then tossed Paget his pen. Paget dropped it. She quickly scooped it back up. "'Mrs. Williams, is there a problem?' Mrs. Brown asked from the front of the room. "'I dropped my pen,' Paget explained. "'Please do not disturb the class again.' "'No, ma'am.' Paget turned her attention to her test and began to answer the first question. "'Today I came unprepared.' I forgot my textbooks, my notes, my cue cards, even a pen to write this test with. I was barely on time. I expect I'll continue to make mistakes, off-air and on-air. Everyone does. But this is my passion. I hear people on the radio, especially talk radio, discussing the news and important things that are happening in people's lives. Everyone has a different opinion, and radio is a freedom to express ourselves and to communicate what our community feels what it embraces, what it rejects, where it wants to direct itself. Radio connects us. I can't believe you forgot a pen! Adam walked with her through the hall after the class was over. That's not all I forgot. No textbooks, no laptop, no money. I even forgot my bus pass. All I have is my keys. Paget jangled them for fur effect before putting them back into her pocket. I'm amazed I made it on time. What happened? Max happened. Adam paused for a moment. Anything I should know? You two kids use protection, right? Paget blushed and swatted him on the arm. Nothing like that. We studied for the test late last night, and he left. I was really tired, and I kept hitting the snooze button this morning because I was dreaming about him. Dirty dreams, Adam suggested. Go away, Adam, Paget rolled her eyes. You've got it bad. He was absolutely gleeful. I'm such a good matchmaker. She stopped walking. Is there even a point to me going to my other classes? All I've got is your pen. Do you want it back? No, it's yours. I've got others. Adam waggled his eyebrows. It's infected with Max cooties now, anyways. Paget put her hands on her hips and cocked her head to the side. Really? Have we sunk to that juvenile low? Yup, he replied serenely. 
Seriously, though, how are you going to get back to your apartment? It's a long walk without a bus pass. Paget sighed. She had no money. There's nothing else I can do but walk. I've got a twenty if you want to borrow a cab fare, Adam offered. No, I think I need to exercise. Plus, the cafe is on the way. Maybe I'll drop in early and see if I can get a few extra hours. Okay, have fun. And sweet dreams of Max tonight. Paget shook her head and started the long trek to the cafe. It was nice weather, but her feet were sore by the time she got there. Paget grabbed a tea and muffin, then sat down, putting her feet up on a chair. The cafe was quiet, so Dix joined her. What does it mean if you barely kiss a guy, and then you dream all night about jumping him? Dix raised a pierced eyebrow. You think that just because I have two psychiatrists for parents, that I'll be able to analyze that messed up mind of yours for free? Maybe. It means you're a red-blooded woman with needs, and he's sexy enough to flame your fire. Dix took a sip of strawberry smoothie through a straw. Max is hot, for an old guy. Thanks, Paget said wryly. Max couldn't be very much older than her. What was the kiss like? Paget smiled dreamily as she remembered. Promising. That's an interesting way to describe a kiss. That's what it was. A whisper of a promise of something more. Something good. Oh boy, she's spouting poetry. Dix licked the straw before dipping it back into the smoothie. You're half in love with this guy already. I am not, Paget denied. She picked a cranberry out of the muffin and ate it. I really like him, though. Hmm, Dix grunted. Why are you here so early? Paget explained this morning's fiasco, and Dix laughed. I stand corrected. You are not in love. You're in lust. Dix stood up. Sure, grab an apron. We'll do some extra cleaning today so you can fill a few hours. The boss won't mind. Paget tried on her apron and grabbed some cleaning cloths with a spray bottle. What do I do about Max? <laughs> Make your dreams into reality. Paget rolled her eyes. Very helpful. I am, Dick said sweetly. Now, get to work. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of The Reverse Cinderella. Also, please subscribe to this channel to enjoy the other audiobooks, helpful videos, and insights into writing. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.